Hello, it's time for new particle stuff again. And for this video, I've created a scene with some colored blobs on layer 2 and just a basic plane on layer 1. So, first, let's add some particles. I don't want quite so many for this example. Mm. And I want the particles to come essentially from uh, one point. So let's scale the emitter down. So now we have a nice stream of particles. So let's do something with the blobs. Let's set the visualization to object and select one of the uh, blobs. And let's scale the particles up a bit so we can see them better. And the first thing you should notice is that the new default behavior is to disregard the actual object position uh, unless the uh, use global is selected. And I think this is much nicer default behavior than the previous one. Uh, but that's not the actual thing I want to show you. So let's switch the visualization to group and select the group of blobs. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, in addition to the use global option, we now have a option called use count, which at first doesn't seem to do anything, but you'll see that there is a list of all the objects that, that are in the group and the number associated with each object. And if we change the number, we change the actual number the times the object, object is duplicated for the particles. So we, we might want, for example, four blue ones, uh, three green ones, and mm, two red ones, and I didn't really like the yellow one, so let's not have the yellow ones at all. And we can also order the duplication, so for example, if we want the green ones to come first, and red ones uh, second, and only then the blue ones. Now that's possible, and the counts also apply if we pick the objects randomly. So now you'll see that uh, there are quite uh, many blue ones, uh, not so many green ones, and although it might seem that there are more red ones than green ones, then you must remember that uh, it's all random. So if we check the particles further, and there will be much more green ones at some point than red ones. And if for some reason uh, the random picking isn't uh, working for you, then you can also change the random seed, which affects the selection. But okay, on with the next thing. And for this we're going to need a curve. And I'll just set it to be a 3D curve. Um, let's move it around a bit and let's disable the gravity so we can see the next thing better and I'll also scale the emitter a bit differently for this one and let's set the particles a bit smaller so they don't block each other Okay, but uh, before curves could only affect uh, particles in a static way using the curve guide option. But uh, if we now select, uh, for example, the force effector, we can see that there is a new shape option called curve. Let's see what that does. Oh, we didn't disable the gravity. Yep. So now all the uh, particles are uh, attracted to the actual shape of the curve. Let's set the particle lifetime a bit bigger so we can see them better. And this is with the force effector. Uh, now, let's see if we choose wind. And now the particles are moving in the direction of the closest point on the curve. 
and with Claw we can uh, uh, attack that they don't uh, run away so quickly. Uh, but the coolest thing I think is the new vortex effector, which makes the particles go around the uh, curve. And somehow I feel that we're going to see a lot more uh, tornadoes done in Blender after this. But it's just uh, just play with these things. There's a huge amount of uh, new options and really no way to explain them all. Just play with them and have fun. And that's all for this time. Thanks for watching and bye bye.